am so excited to be chatting with you. I'm here in Austin, beautiful Austin, Texas. And um, thank you for kind of figuring out the math of the I time think, difference. I think it was you. I think you figured out the time difference. <laughs> I tried. I did my best. <laughs> I'm in the English countryside and I'm very honoured to be speaking with you, Olivia. So wow. thank you for making the time. It's my pleasure and I'm super excited about Presence, your song. And I hey. feel like the, the, what I wanted to ask you from the moment that I, I heard it is kind of what inspired you to create this beautiful piece of music. Oh. That's so kind. Um, the The single presence was really inspired out of quite a, a challenging time. Us, you know, as a collective um, in this world, have been through a couple of years of it, and it was a difficult moment for me. And I was pretty deep into rereading Eckhart Tolle's A New Earth who obviously speaks a lot about the importance of presence. And I was picking up different spiritual texts here and there and really like a lot of us just doing what I could to, to make the most of, you know, every day and, and, and try and keep it together. And this concept of presence just kept on coming back to me, you know, in each moment. And I really realised that, that was the only answer. You know, everything was so difficult, but if I could really put into practice this concept of coming back to this moment right here, then there was nothing wrong. You know, things were wrong in the past, things, you know, could be wrong in the future, but right here in this moment, it was perfect. It is perfect. Um, so I, I, I wanted to take this and I wanted to put it into my music. And it was one of the last songs that I recorded for the album actually. Um, and I'm, yeah, I'm super happy with how it turned out. I also, I also didn't want to, you know, it's, it's, it sort of bumps the track and I wanted it to be fun. I grew up listening, you know, my parents were alternative and there was spiritual music that we would listen to, but it was quite rare to find Positive messaging, it's it's very tricky, I think, to put positive messaging into music without it sounding trite. Um, yeah. It can be a bit naff. And so the challenge was to put this positive messaging that was very real for me, the messaging of presence, and insert it into a modern pop song in a cool way, you know, in a way that it would be something that I would want to listen to. Because the truth is when I write these songs, you know, they flow through me and there's some thought behind them sometimes. But at the end of the day, I always, when I end up listening back to them, whether it's when I'm making them or a year from then or five years from then, I'm always so grateful for for the songs to speak back to me. Yes. <laughs> That's so beautifully said. And I'm so, uh, I love that you were raised in an alternative kind of, family I'm like I love that and um I'm so uncool myself that <laughs> I don't even know I don't know what NAF means <laughs> yeah, NAF. NAF. NAF, mean? NAF I wonder if NAF is Australian NAF like NAF. oh gosh I think I it's just NAF? cool I think I just I'm <laughs> no, just no. Like, <laughs> no, NAF know. is like a little it might be Australian NAF is just like a little uncool I guess NAF okay you know, <laughs> I guess I'm not <laughs> the irony. You're, you're definitely not now. You are like, you are the, the true cool, Olivia. Oh. I would never say you are uncool. I, everything you do is a total inspiration to me. So oh. I was, I was very honored and feel very blessed that you were able to make a meditation uh, to go alongside the release of presence. Because when people listen to this song, if they listen to this song and this song speaks to them, I would really, you know, I really wanted there to be something practical that they could use a tool to help 
help find their way into presence. Because for me, I'm definitely not singing this song and saying, oh, I figured it out. You know, like I'm not right. singing this song about presence and um, being like, oh, I've, yeah, I'm present in every moment. No way. I'm very human. Yeah. Um, and I want, but I still want these concepts to be accessible, you know? And so yeah. your guided meditations are a really perfect introduction to that. Oh, thank you. Well, your words made me think that, you know, the people in my life who've, um, who've said like, I've got it all figured out. <laughs> they, they, don't, they so don't. And so, and the people who have, like you just said, who've expressed, you know, I'm still, um, it's a constant, I, I'm still it's, human. It's a constant kind of realignment. Those for me have been guiding lights Aww. you know so just in saying that I I feel like it gives you a lot of credibility and <laughs> and so the meditation that I created actually you know you really inspired because presence is it's very uh difficult to harness I feel and so in my life it's been a big part of my life I traveled with Eckhart Tolle and I learned a lot from him, not through what he said, because he would often say the same things over and over again. And he would joke about how he says the same thing over <laughs> and over again. But he said, you know, I really just teach one thing. But what was great about him is that he also embodies it. So he does um, walk the walk of, of presence, if you could say that. And um and there are so many different ways to be there, to, to be present and to, to find presence and to talk about presence. And so I feel like it was really helpful to, to, to talk about with you kind of what inspired you and what got you into the experience of presence because it's a beautiful subject to talk about but you can't figure it out. <laughs> you know, it's something to practice and the uh, practice isn't always easy, you know? No. I think Eckhart said, um, and I don't know if he was quoting somebody else, mm -hmm. but he said it's presence is like a candle. And when you're in the day, it's barely, oh, I have a candle right here. Like you can't even tell that it's lit, you know? So do I. So do I. Here we go, here we go. <laughs> it's like, it doesn't matter if it's lit or not lit. It's just almost invisible. But in the darkness, if you're in a dark cave, if you're in a dark room mm -hmm. and you just have this candle, it becomes so important. And so I feel like all of our spiritual work really, uh, or I'll speak for myself, mm -hmm. all of my spiritual work really served me when we did hit the pandemic because that was like the lights went out. Yeah. for so many of us yeah. you know there's so much uncertainty and fear and those are the times when these spiritual understandings whether you're coming through buddhism or through advaita vedanta mm -hmm. or through christianity or through whatever your your um uh, religious or spiritual framework is that's where your real understanding beyond the intellect can come into play and serve you like a candle. Yeah, um, that's that's such a beautiful metaphor. And I, even just listening to you, it resonated so much with me, brought tears to my eyes because that's exactly how it was. You know, yeah. I've been meditating daily for, for a while and had been, you know, digging into these spiritual texts casually you know I'm I'm not a, a professional like you um but 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 they really when it comes to those darkest moments and I guess that's a lot of my seeking was born out of you know one of my darkest moments um as a Mariki was when my father passed away and that was sort of what set me off on this journey of of seeking seeking within seeking for greater peace within I guess um and yeah when when the pandemonium hit it really 
that idea of the candle. It's so it's just so true. And I was able to keep it lit longer than I think I could have otherwise. Yeah. And, pre and presence. That's just it's 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 so funny because it's such a simple answer and it's the most complex <laughs> answer on the planet because daily, you know, I struggle, I I struggle with presence. I think I'm just grateful that I have this awareness around it. So when I notice myself like, oh, why aren't I feeling very good this morning? And it's it's all, you know, nine times out of 10, it's, oh, well, I'm living in a future that hasn't happened yet or I'm dwelling in a past that is over, right? Yeah. And I, I you know, actively, actively seek to bring myself back here where everything is perfect. Um, some days it works better than others, but I will never stop trying because in those moments is pure joy and bliss and life. Yes, yes. And, I, you know, you said I'm a professional, but <laughs> you are it's, professional. it's the same. It's the same. <laughs> I mean, this is why I'm a professional, because I need these practices so much, not because I'm at all perfected but because I need to constantly bring myself back it's it's funny funny is not the right word <laughs> it's it's amazing how easy it is to forget we can have these spiritual awakenings um these deep spiritual uh soul seeking um experiences like I I can only imagine how hard it was when you're father made his transition to to navigate that and I'm sure you went really really into deep deep exploration there mm -hmm. and yet it's not a lasting or for me at least it's something I have to constantly realign yeah. every day it's a daily practice you know mm -hmm. yeah it really is and it's a practice like you said earlier it's like it's a practice you I, I yeah I'm not online I'm definitely not online <laughs> yet <laughs> gotta keep going um but I think we do we we do we sort of look at these holy you know figures and we, we can look up to them and you know reaching that enlightenment or that zen um but the truth is you know 99% of us are we're human beings and we're having a human experience and I think it's about picking up as many tools on the way so that we can not only find joy and bliss, but find truth in ourselves. You know, the journey for me has so, so deeply been about, yeah, figuring out how to manage my emotions and my grief and, you know, the millions of different things that we come across as human beings, but really trying to get to the center of, 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 me as a person self-realization and and being able to being able to encompass that person that only I can be on this planet and I think the same for for all of us yes and this it, it behooves our whole um planetary community yes. I think for all of us to to work toward that and also something that you said reminded me of kind of um when I try to uh well I often try <laughs> to work everything out myself um you know for my family of origin my young adult life I'm a very um self-sufficient person however I find that when I practice meditation and I get quiet enough to connect to the presence that I experience is almost like an energetic web that it, it connects all of mm -hmm. us it's intelligent it's compassionate this uh, this is just what I sense mm -hmm. when I connect with that energy and I allow that to be part of my doing it's almost like things lean toward me instead of when I'm trying to do it, yeah. like my, my yeah. go-to, my reflex from my childhood or whatever is to go, 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 go and like get it myself. 
doesn't does it, it's almost like I chase my good fortune away. So when I relax just a little bit and allow myself to feel like right now, to feel how safe I am, to feel gravity, to notice that this glass is very solid and protective and just to feel how safe the air is around me right now, to come into that feeling of being safe and held by I guess you could call it presence or the universe or universal energy. When I invite that into my being, it's as though the world also opens a little bit, mm. you know, and life itself flows more easily. And I guess for some people, this is just really obvious. <laughs> mm -hmm. But for me, in my daily life, in my daily practice, working parenting in relationships it's something I have to constantly remember and and invite back into my life I guess another metaphor would be that we're like fish swimming in an ocean and we're searching for water and it's <laughs> it's just all around us but we through our we all have these traumas and we close ourselves off from it and it's just a question of kind of reopening and allowing that to be part of our flow you know mm. I don't know yeah. if you feel that oh definitely I was just bathing I was just bathing <laughs> in your words I was like yes yes <laughs> keep going um yeah I I feel like you sort of you sort of beautifully encapsulated the goal right the goal everything's all yeah and then look we you know we come into this world with different circumstances and as different people and with different tools and you know parents and financial situations you know um and I feel very blessed that I've been able to in my life sort of spend time you know with 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 trying to figure all of this out and with getting to a place where I know the things that can help and yeah I want to I want to I want to share that wherever wherever I can so I I hope that I hope that this song and these meditations and and the whole record you know can sort of share my years and years of 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 digging very easy <laughs> to try and figure some shit out <laughs> I feel like it's incredibly brave of you mm. and inspiring um like your I, I feel like your humility and your softness is actually incredible strength and that's also a Taoist teaching that <laughs> that the, the strongest um, comes across as the soft, the softest, mm. you know? And um, I think it doesn't take a lot of strength to kind of pretend like, but it all figured out. I'm just, you know, <laughs> it takes a lot of strength to say, this is a daily practice and I'm human. And I, I just really admire that. You know, because we do have the choice. You don't have to be vulnerable. And I think it's so beautiful. I I think, again, with my dad passing away, I did sort of have to learn to be a little bit more vulnerable because I, I would have imploded. Um, my, it's funny, you, you're, it's very sweet. You're calling me very soft. Um, or, but my, I'm, a, I'm a triple Aries and I feel like my family would say otherwise. <laughs> Um, but I completely agree with you. Vulnerability is the the strongest, bravest thing you can do. And I love that there's more talk and, uh, you know, there's more literature and things about exactly that now. Yeah. Because it's cool. It's cool to be, it's cool to be honest, you know, it is. I, know. I have it's, to check in with you about what's cool. Oh because... my God. It's the, <laughs> it's the coolest thing. It's like, what's cool about 
you know, pretending to be someone you're not or right. pretending to be, you know, okay when you're not. Yeah. There's nothing cool about that. What's cool is being able to be yourself um, wholly and and being able to be honest about being human. And this is a wild ride, you know? Yeah. I love the use of your word holy because it just like <laughs> a light bulb went off for me. Like maybe that's what it really is holy. to be holy. Wow. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do some like animation afterwards and we'll do the speech bubble out of their heads. <laughs> I just want to, I want to see a halo on you. Oh, oh, you're being too, too, you're too kind to me. Um, But Mariki, I wonder if you want to talk about practices that serve you. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, And I do think that daily practices are very unique to each person, but the things for me, I have to wake up in the morning and I have to get, some time by myself so you know if that's waking up ahead of whoever's in the house then that's something I need to do it's funny I spoke to a a girlfriend about this the other day and she was like yeah you need like an hour to yourself to like remember like who you are and like your place in the universe and I was like yeah exactly I really because some people wake up and they're like bing and they're there I am not, I am far off in a distant planet and I need to come back and exactly that ground and, and I journal each morning. So I wake up, I make a cup of tea, I journal and it's not journaling. Like, I don't know. Journaling sounds cool. My journaling is not cool. My journaling is (laughs) literally like, just like almost like grocery list journaling. It's emptying my brain of whatever is in there so that I can be free of that and move on um I then do my daily meditation practice I use inside timer um mostly it's just sound bowls but occasionally if my brain is a little too full I do love using or it's probably 50 50 if I'm feeling like I I'm more present already in the day then I will just use a sound bowl you know heart chakra um or you know, there's there's different options if I'm feeling like my brain is quite full I love a guided meditation because it just helps get me back on track um and sometimes I'm feeling a little you know I I, ha- I can be impatient so sometimes I, I'll choose the you know the 10 minute gratitude meditation guided just to get me back here you know um so I love that and then I will come back to my my writing books and I'll either write some poetry or, or I'll write a book I'll generally read an excerpt out of whichever at the moment I'm reading The How which is an amazing um amazing book actually but sometimes I'll do page openings from and you know Eckhart Tolle or Thich Nhat Hanh just something to align my day with the frequency that I want to continue my day on um, and from there, yeah, hope for the best, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's I think that's so beautiful and really helpful, you know. What about you? To know. What, what are your, what are your, do you have a morning practice or you probably maybe a morning and an evening practice? <laughs> well, I actually said to my partner recently, I'm like, should I really be uh, <laughs> teaching spirituality or meditation and he said um you know you you teach what you need sometimes Mm -hmm. and what he observed is that I sometimes realign myself by kind of listening to that intuitive uh part of myself and I I sense a real difference between my mind and my intuition my intuition is always right on but again it's that ability to open to it and not be overwhelmed or taken over by the logical planning mind part of things you know to anchor back in to presence and I I can imagine that when you know like the meditation that you made for presence for example I can imagine that to be able to 
speak those words for that length of time, you have to be in alignment with presence to do that. So for you, are you sort of saying that, that your practice is in, in your teaching, in, in your work? It does come through my work. And also, actually, Eckhart said this once, that he will be speaking and it's almost like channeling. Yeah. And words come out, would come out of his mouth and his mind would, would say in his thoughts, like, oh, that's good. I have to remember that. I have to try that. <laughs> so, um, oh, so essentially, I, I need to practice every day. And often I make practices for myself <laughs> that I need. Um, and really, for me, the daily part is, is crucial. And for me, also the Tai Chi part, the physical part is really important because the my body. I can agree more. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just like, that's the part yeah. that I haven't quite nailed down yet. I know that a daily Tai Chi practice or Qigong practice would be, would be, yeah, would really, really round things out for me. I can help you with that. No, um, no. But that it, it definitely does for me, like my, I like to think of my body as like a pet, as my pet. And so just like with a dog, you have to walk your dog, brush your dog, feed your dog regularly, the appropriate foods, you know, mm -hmm. I really feel differently when my body is involved in the spiritual practice and when I'm bringing light into my body, um, and when I'm careful about what I put into my body, it makes a big difference for me. And I know oh. some people feel like it shouldn't, like, oh, you should just rise above it. No, of course. I, I really feel it. And that's very individual as well. I didn't right. touch on physical health, but that's a huge part. I mean, the physical aspect of, of all of this is so important. And for me, grounding, putting my feet in the earth every day is super important for me because I tend to be up here trying to float away with the with the fairies and I I live on this planet so I need to connect but moving moving my body every day and um yeah eating well because when you eat well you tell your body and your mind that you care about this body and this mind you know yes. and I yes. find such a difference if I know that I have nourished myself if I have cooked for myself or made sure that I got the right nutrients into my body in this day then the feeling that it the, the self-love that I can find for myself is greater um I guess which is a little a little presence off topic but it's again it goes back to the whole the holy holy <laughs> And so, and that brings me back again to the kind of full circle halo of what is presence for someone who's just maybe watching and they've never been um, involved in anything spiritual. And so many people um, who are, you know, when I traveled with Eckhart, my, my companions were all in their 60s. I was 20. <laughs> And it's Pretty a cool. mature thing to be interested in spirituality. And often people my age or your age don't come to it um, yet. As for some reason, you, both you and I have been drawn to it for a long time. But for people who are just, maybe they hear your song and, and it opens them up or sparks their curiosity. Mm. What would you what say? Is what is it? presence for me is I, I guess a feeling of alignment with this moment when I can feel like my mind and my heart and my body are here in this moment and then this moment and this moment they're not scattered in in different directions. 
So that's what presence is to me. I, I, I'm, I would love to know what presence is for you. And I would also just quickly before we finish up, I would love to know, um, dig a little into, into what some of Eckhart's presence practices were, if you knew, or like, you know, like what you witnessed when you oh. were with him in terms of how, how present he was. Ultimately, we're talking about love, divine love. And I would say that being present in the here and now opens the window. It opens a, a door to let in this reality like a breeze or like a ray of sunshine of our true universal reality, which is divine love. And the reality of all pervasive love is revealed like a veil is lifted. So maybe presence can also be beyond being present in the here and now, or in addition to, or because of being present in the here and now, presence is what can happen. And that's an experience of overwhelming, all pervasive divine love, either a direct experience of that reality, which is always there, it's always happening. We just have to open to it or through someone seeing or being in that true reality of divine love, it flows to us, it touches us, it's contagious. We get glimpses into presence, I feel like when we do something that we love, right? something that we love or perhaps something that's really challenging as well um today we were recording a song and and Danny um had to do these hand claps that were like so complicated and he actually said it's amazing I can't think about anything else whilst I'm doing these because it's taking up it was a really you know it's like a, a, a funny pattern it was like it's taking up all of my everything in me to to focus I think a yogic way, uh, mm -hmm. there's a yogic um, phrase called neti neti, which is mm -hmm. not this, not this. It's so easy to say what it isn't. And so I would say it's, for me, the absence of wanting, you know, and that might seem out there, but if you really have ever wanted something and then you've gotten it, there's a brief moment of time where you feel satiated. You can feel the absence of yearning, but mm -hmm. you can also access that absence of wanting, absence of yearning through coming into the moment and just noticing your desires or your desire body without acting on it and kind of letting it go, letting it go, letting it go, letting it go, and feeling completeness or enoughness with yourself as you are without further modification. Mm -hmm. I feel like so many of us are unsatisfied with our bodies, our lives, our relationships, and just allowing everything to be enough as it is allows me to feel present to to access presence which is actually I feel like it's beyond me so coming into this place of being in the moment it opens me up to this really high level of nourishment and inspiration and feeling that connection feeling in community with everything around me, including, you know, my house plants, like <laughs> feeling really, really at one with all that is. And I, I feel like so much of our culture revolves around giving little tastes of presence through, um, through substances, through, um, purchases clicks. through clicks it's like you get a little taste of presence but it's a tease because it's ultimately diminishing returns whereas when you practice consciously you're you're getting um snowballing benefits it's just more and more benefit as opposed to less of it. so yeah 
so yeah, for me, in a nutshell, presence would be um, coming into a very natural way of being that is, is often obscured by neurosis, desires, um, thoughts of the past, thoughts of the future, um, all of these aspects of life are pulling us and that's kind of the definition of stress it's like where it's like pulling a rubber band all these different directions and when i'm fully present i feel like the rubber band is just calm calm relaxed not stretched yeah i think we all have glimpses into presence in different ways and i think for me the daily practice of presence, the daily practice of bringing my thoughts back into alignment with this moment right here um, can just bring more joy to, to my day and, and less stress, like you're saying. That's the, that's the goal, right? It's like yes. bringing us away from our daily stresses, our daily anxieties. And it feels like so many more people seem to suffer from anxiety nowadays. And I think grasping onto any tools we can find that can help us um, have less time with anxieties and stress. Yes, and I would say to add to that, when you're fully present, you can bring your most inspired, complete, connected self to your work, which is like bringing the universe to your work, bringing the power of presence to whatever you're interacting with, you know, as opposed e to bringing a fragment of yourself. Yes, even, you. yeah, even when there's a lot going on, you know, we all yeah. know what it's like to have a really busy week and have to have lots of moving parts. But, you know, I think we also all know that if we can be calm and centered about all of the moving parts it's always the best way forward as tricky as that is I love how it's getting like darker the sun's setting <laughs> over here in England hey, you're backlit and you look like a um, saint <laughs> um, anyway yes and you were asking about what I observed Eckhart I would love to know do, do you want to know he well he's like he's the father of of presence you know to me I mean he is kind of the the father of 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 presence in modern society right I don't even know um I could be wrong he uh, maybe just to me in my family I I grew up you know the power of yeah now. well to me he's really big but mm -hmm. then I often meet people who have no idea oh, I, love uh, I do too mm -hmm. so yeah to me he's a huge part of my life but I have no idea how I hope that if you're watching this you, you check out the work of that part tomorrow. yes but, definitely um so his practice, I mean, he'll go, something, speaking of presence mm -hmm. about him is that he'll be back, he would be backstage and the audience would be really loud, like thousands of people, super loud, really like, and as soon as he was ready, he'd be backstage, he wouldn't be coming out, there'd be no change to the lighting, no announcement. As soon as he was ready and about to come out, the whole audience would just wow it was like like a lion you know wow stepped into the uh the pasture. power but the power of presence it's this real power right there in presence. existence like wow. people could just sense like oh if something's about to happen just the energy shifted hmm. um and then what he would do before speaking he didn't have a formal practice and I mean, he doesn't align himself with any particular um, uh, teaching, mm -hmm. um, but he would sit in a chair or lay down. And essentially, I mean, I would observe him just kind of merging with the sacred or the divine. I don't know what you would call it, but he would just open himself uh, for a few minutes of total silence. And when he would go in front of the audience, he would never prepare. He would really, what I perceived was a listening 
like listening with all of his, his being. And then he would just start speaking and captivate, you know, thousands of people. Um, and then he practiced being present with everything he did. So whether he was sipping a glass of wine or water or eating, he just, it's almost like he refused to, to go anywhere else to rush. He refused to be sucked into the so another practice of Eckhart's that again wasn't a formal practice but something I observed and learned a lot from is that he would <clears throat> set aside time to do nothing and and he really would just do nothing <laughs> and um you know it reminds me of Albert Einstein who got his best ideas in the bathtub or going for a walk, just when there was this quiet spaciousness. And also Eckhart was very playful. So one day um, we were visiting with Eckhart and my daughter was just old enough to walk and kind of run around and she would chase the cat from room to room and Eckhart would chase her from room to room and for a long time, there was just giggling and meowing and giggling and meowing as they ran around the house. So this kind of behavior is rare in our culture, but I think it's important to maintain our humanity, our ability to just do nothing from time to time, to just be open, and also to play, to keep playfulness in our lives, in our life experiences. My mom always used to say, we're human beings, not human doings, you know? And, oh. I, and, I, and, I, and I come back to that. It's I come good. back to that a lot. Yeah, it's good. It's um, really good. It's really good. But oh, I love hearing that. I, 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 it must have been an incredible experience being around that kind of energy yeah it's palpable mm. it's like taking a drug because mm. when you're around somebody who has that much energy you feel it as um as as real as kind of being washed over with um yeah it's very powerful wow but ultimately cool. we all have to learn how to generate that for ourselves we do yeah <laughs> <laughs> so yeah well it's been an absolute honor and delight to talk to you as ever thank you. and thank you so much for yeah for all of your work around this release and um it, it just feels really meaningful and important to me that you've been involved well thank you Mariki and your song and your work is really meaningful and important to me. And thank you for being the creative being that you are. You know, I'm really grateful to know you. No, very grateful to know you. Blessed. Presence, presence.